Hello everyone, Sean Reeves, Little Blue House Ministries. I'm glad you could join me this week. It's been quite a week here in the States, as we all know, with the George Floyd uh, things going on. We've had some protests going on around the country, which some of which have turned violent into riots and things like that. We've had some buildings burning. I mean, things have been, really been tough. I think that, you know, we're going through a time in this country where you know, people are wanting to see change in different areas, and sometimes the change is needed, obviously, and we all know that. Uh, the the other thing, too, is I think that people are kind of feeling some unrest after being locked down from the coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic, so tensions have been really high, um, and I know as, as Christians, we've all had to kind of sit back and watch and kind of figure out, you know, what the next steps are. Is it safe to go outside with the coronavirus? Is it safe to go to certain areas and cities right now with the protests that have even turned into riots in some spots? So just keep in mind one thing, God's in control. He's been there the whole time. He knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, no matter what happens, he allows things to happen so we can grow in our lives. Um, I wanted to just talk to you for a few minutes about a biblical story about this in the book of Genesis. It's actually about a man named Joseph. Now, Joseph was actually one of the few people in the Bible that never sinned. Uh, there's no biblical account of Joseph sinning, but I can tell you that Joseph was a very interesting man. His brothers actually ended up hating him because he was their father's favorite, even though he was the youngest. So Joseph went through kind of being ostracized because he was the father's favorite favorite at one point he was even thrown into a pit by his brothers because they were so angry with him and you think wow joseph you know great man of great character you know ends up being one of the biggest figures in the bible but god allowed him to be thrown into a pit and it's hard to figure this out sometimes even as christians where okay you know we're thrown into that pit and then all of a sudden, what happens next to Joseph? He's put into slavery. He's sold to a caravan of traders that take him to Egypt. And again, you're thinking, Joseph, you know, in the biblical accounts, he never sinned. All he did was trust God. But God allowed him to be sold into slavery. And then, and then Joseph gets into slavery, and he ends up at a house of a man named Potiphar. Now, Potiphar was the chief of the guards for Pharaoh back in the day. So Joseph is there, and God's with him. And because God's with him, everything he touches prospers. So Joseph is given the run of the house. He's allowed to do anything he wants to, pretty much, as long as he keeps up with the affairs of Potiphar. Well, Potiphar goes on this long business trip, and what happens? But Potiphar's wife comes to Joseph and tries to seduce him, tries to get Joseph to sleep with her. Joseph, being a man of God, says, you know, I've been entrusted with everything in my master's home, and I can't sin against God by doing this with you. She tries and tries again until one day she actually gets Joseph off to the side. She rips his cloak off and he runs out. Well, she screams and calls the guards and says Joseph tried to rape her. You can only imagine at this point Joseph's going, okay, what is, what's going on with my life? What is this, God? But he just keeps trusting God, just as Joseph did all through the scripture. And then he gets sent to prison. Well, while he's in prison, Pharaoh's cupbearer gets sent to prison. So Joseph's there, and one day the cupbearer says, I had this dream. And then Joseph says, yeah, I can interpret your dream. So he interprets the dreams that within three days that the cupbearer will be reinstalled with Pharaoh. And he asked the cupbearer one thing. When you're reinstalled with Pharaoh, please remember me. Anyways, three days goes by, of course, Joseph, because he has God's favor. The vision does come to pass that Joseph had. So when the cupbearer gets there, one thing that happens is the cupbearer forgets Joseph. And I just want to stop right there because, see, this is like so much of our lives. So many times we're given things in our life that, that aren't good. And then God presents a situation that's a challenge, but... What is the challenge really doing for us? Are you growing? Are you standing still? Are you allowing the challenge to defeat you? Not Joseph, of course. You know, he spends actually another couple years in that prison. But during this time, Joseph gets put in charge of the whole prison by the warden. 
So think about this. No matter where Joseph goes, God's hand of favor is on him. It doesn't matter where he's at, what the circumstances are. Joseph continues to shine and just be a great man of God. Anyways, one day Pharaoh has a dream. And uh, the dream's very interesting. It's about seven skinny cows and seven fat cows. All of Pharaoh's advisors try to come up with what the dream means. Pharaoh asks them. They just can't come up with it. Then the cupbearer remembers Joseph. And as he does, Joseph is brought in front of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh says, can you interpret the dream? He said, yeah, it's simple. Here's the dream. Seven skinny cows are seven years of famine. But before those seven years of famine, those seven fat cows are seven years of prosperity. So Joseph, in essence, says, Pharaoh, you have to take the seven years and store up grain for the seven years of famine. At this point, Pharaoh's just amazed. He says, okay, Joseph, I'm putting you second in command in Egypt. I'm going to give you charge over all the food, all the grain, everything like that. So at that point, Joseph gets in charge, saves up all the grain, stores up for those seven years of famine. Well, during this time when the famine starts, you know, Israel struggles a lot. And Joseph's brothers, believe it or not, are actually sent by their father to Egypt because they hear they have grain. So upon getting to Egypt, the brothers are actually in front of Joseph. And as they are, Joseph, he, he finally remembers, sees them, and knows who they are. They didn't recognize him because it had been so many years. Long story short, Joseph, who, who was abused by his brothers, again, thrown in the pit, sold into slavery, all these bad things that happened to him were because of his brother's actions, actually says, yes, I'll give you grain. And instead of taking their silver... He actually gives them double the amount of silver they came with and gives them all the food for free. Long story short, that's the most interesting part of the story is, is that the brothers finally realize who Joseph is, and they're amazed that Joseph's even able to basically give to them after everything they did. So the moral of the story is, is that everybody in the Bible, including Joseph, goes through these trials. We go through these trials ourselves every day. I mean, you can't be the CEO of a company if you've never started at the bottom. You've got to start somewhere, and God's going to allow you to go through trials, and he's going to test you in things. I mean, if God can trust you with a little, he'll give you a lot. So just keep in mind that the story of Joseph is a great picture of this, where he goes through many, many trials, but in the end, he becomes a leader of a country second in command and here's even better than that he actually saves his own family during a during a famine his family that like i said previously had completely sold him out so i just want everybody to understand god's working there he's working behind the scenes whatever your struggle is whether it's your job your finances your marriage all these things you have to remember you're an adopted son of god through christ so you technically, you have the favor of Joseph, just like he did in the Bible. You have to take the authority. You have to pray, I have the favor of Joseph. With that favor of Joseph, pretty much God can walk you through anything, and he can put you in very high positions. But it's going to take a lot of faith at times, and you're, you're going to see darkness you're going to see tough times you're going to see struggles and you're going to feel like during these times and sometimes things like this may go on for years but you're going to see during these times that wow i just don't know what to do god where where do i go next you just have to keep praying in scripture and believing on his promises just like joseph did because joseph again never even sinned through the bible but all these bad things happen so you can imagine in our lives that we have sin. There's nothing we can do about that. You know, everybody sins, but God still, through the blood of Christ, has redeemed us. So I'm asking everybody out there during these times, whether it's, you know, what's going on with, with some of the protests, different riots, things, and, and I completely understand that, you know, people feel as though they've been abused and, you know, people have the right to protest. I don't believe in the riots when they cause damage and things like that. I don't think that's doing anything good or, or showing God in a good face. But even during this coronavirus, you know, 40 million people were unemployed as of last week. I mean, 
Well, as you're going through these struggles, just remember that God's taken you. He's refining you. You're on the potter's wheel, as the scripture said, and he's going to take you to great places. All you have to do is trust on him. He will open the right doors. He'll give you the opportunities. He'll make a way where there's not a way. I just thank you so much for joining me this week and look forward to uh, giving you the message next week. Again, I'm Sean Reeves with Little Blue House Ministries. Thank you.